Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So yesterday during my episode 5 review, I asked you to submit all your questions about, you know, WTF Crasters, Sansa, Ari and the Hound, everything else. So I picked 10 of them to answer in this video with one bonus question. I also have a huge, huge thank you to say to all of you guys for being so amazing because as I'm posting this video, I just hit 200,000 subscribers. So I never expected this to happen. I'll try to do a special announcements video later this week that'll kind of explain some of the new stuff that I'm working on right now. But thank you so much. Also, high fives to Shelly Summers and Matt Dave. You are this week's giveaway winners. You both win a $20 Amazon gift card. I'll be contacting you on your channels for details. So the next round of the giveaway starts after episode six airs, whenever I post that video. So if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get that. Now let's answer some questions. You guys had a lot of good ones this week, so it was really hard to pick, but careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. But here we go, question one. Amur asks, why did Locke want Bran and what was he gonna do with him? So if you remember all the way back to at the Dreadfort with Theon and Ramsay Snow, they basically told Roose Bolton that the Stark children were still alive. Right now, Roose is supposed to be ruling in the north, but as long as the Stark children are still alive, Bran and Rickon, that is, people could rally support behind them, so Roose sent Locke to capture them so they could prevent any challenges to their rule. He was never going to kill them, you know, Roose Bolton isn't as vicious as Ramsay, but they would have still been prisoners. Question number two, Jessica asks, is Arya's direwolf Nymeria still alive? And is she going to be back in the story? So Nymeria is still alive, but George R. R. Martin has been really vague on whether or not she's going to come back into the story or Arya is going to see her again. So it's currently unconfirmed, but because the show changes a lot of things, anything could happen, especially since we've been getting a lot of first person perspective wolf shots whenever Bran wargs into summer. So until we get confirmation, just assume that Nymeria is running free somewhere between Winterfell and the Riverlands, just out in the wild. Question number three, Emily Whittle asks, how long do you think Arya and the Hound will stay together? Yeah, they really did tease us with Arya saying his name during the prayer and him actually hearing it and just taking notice and then her trying to stab him with needle. I think it says a lot that the blade did not penetrate his armor. I think it's Dave and Dan just letting us know that they're gonna be together for a while longer. I'm all in favor for them staying together all season, but clearly things cannot go on the way they are now forever. She definitely hates him, and there's no way their story is going to get a happy ending, all nice and clean. I feel like on Game of Thrones, we've learned to just wait for the rug to get pulled out from under characters, so I'm really waiting for something to happen between the two of them. For all the book readers out there too, personally, I would not flip out if they completely changed the book plot and did something totally crazy. Remember what happened with the White Walkers, you know, they did an extra scene that wasn't in the books, but technically was part of the timeline, so they could do a lot of those things with Arya and the Hound. Question number four, Homebrez asks, what do you think will happen to King's Landing because of all their debts? So after I made my review video, I actually saw Mark Gatiss inside the teaser for episode six. So he is actually gonna give you that answer. I think the bank is going to threaten to fund Stannis unless the throne can repay their debt. Remember, a Lannister always pays his debts. And right now it looks like the Tyrells are their only option. There are a couple big things that Tywin could choose to do. He could try to discredit the Tyrells and seize their assets and, you know, use those to pay off the bank. Or he could just ask them for help and they could genuinely just trade money for like a seat on the small council or something else of value. Question number five, Genesis This asks, how come Cersei was so civil towards Marjorie? So there's actually a couple things going on here. First, she's still completely mentally and emotionally fried from Joffrey's death and she's still reconciling the reality of his craziness. Remember how she talked about how he shocked her? So she doesn't have the energy to hate right now. She's just thinking about Tommen's future, which leads to the second big reason. She really wants Tommen to stay pure like he is right now, and she knows that he needs more positive influences in his life. Even though technically, according to Littlefinger, everyone in King's Landing is a liar. So she's really just trying to appeal to Marjorie's sense of goodness. You know, I think she understands what Marjorie is capable of, but inside, I think that Marjorie is a good person. Think about how shocked she was when Lady Elena told her how she killed Joffrey, obviously with the help of Littlefinger and Ser Dantos. Question number six, Yokandar asks, when will we see Gendry and Yara Greyjoy again? So actually, yeah, a lot of you guys have been asking me about Gendry, and he's definitely still alive. The show wouldn't just forget about him after he rode away from Dragonstone. It's possible that they could combine the Yara Ironborn story with Gendry's escape. They're both on the right side of Westeros. Gendry was originally supposed to road to King's Landing, but I do not think that he's gonna make it there. And in the teaser for episode six, we do see Ramsay Snow and Yara. 
but no Gendry, so we'll have to wait and see. Another possibility is, is that Gendry could run into Ari again. I'm not expecting that, but they're both on the right side of Westeros. I mean, Ari is headed east. Question number seven, Stephanie Herman asks, do you think that next season we'll get into Winds of Winter stuff because the show is moving so fast? No, actually I don't because there's a lot of Dance with Dragon stuff that I haven't seen yet. They really have slowed the pace of the story down and think about how short some of Daenerys' scenes have been. She was barely in this episode. What I do think will end up happening is that we'll get more sidetrack side stories like the White Walkers in the last episode and Craster's in this episode. Some of the directors have already said that they expect more big deviations to come up as the show gets further along. So don't plan on seeing any Winds of Winter stuff till season 6 at the earliest. Remember, we are shooting for 8 seasons, so they want to stretch this out as much as possible. So I think we'll just see a lot more scenes that weren't originally in the books. Question number 8, Lexiville asks, What was the whole reason for the Craster's house plot with Bran, Locke, and Jon Snow? So, also, bunch of stuff going on right here. First you have Locke, a character that was not in the books. Then you have Bran, who really isn't even in the story at this point. The whole Bran going to find the Weirwood tree is part of Dance with Dragons. That's way ahead in the story. So they did like a Theon Greyjoy thing where they add extra story to fill the gaps in the timeline. Plus they had Burn Gorman's character, which actually was in the original books even though they changed it a little bit, and the Night's Watch Revolt. They had to tie all those plots up and put a nice little bow on it. So that's really what Craster's was for. Now Bran is back on track, the revolt has been put down, and Jon Snow can worry about the impending wildling attack. And the Locke character, who was significant but not part of the original story, is taken care of. Remember, sometimes characters aren't in entire books, like Theon was not in book 3, but they had him in season 3, so they just add a lot of filler to fill in those gaps. Question number 9, Ryan Birds asks, Will we ever see the Brotherhood without banners again? So the Brotherhood is still in the Riverlands right around the crossroads. Brienne is headed in that direction with Podrick looking for Sansa, so if anyone runs into them, it will be her. So if we see them again, it will be part of the Brienne plot. I know everyone keeps asking me about Lady Stoneheart. There has been no indication that she's going to be on the show, so I do not want to talk about her too soon. Also, people who have read the books, when you're talking about Lady Stoneheart, be careful for spoilers in the comments below just for people who are only watching the show. Question number 10, Peter Rubin asks, How will Bravos come into the show? So I think Mark Gatiss will be our first real introduction. Although the bank has branches in all the kingdoms of the world, its central office is just located in Bravos. As for that scene of the Titan from the trailers, we saw it again in the teaser for episode 6, so I'm guessing that Stannis and Sir Davos will go there to get more money. Those scenes were actually shown in conjunction with Davos on the ship and Davos pleading with someone, so I really am thinking that they're going to Bravos right now, at least in the next episode. And one last bonus question, Curtis Gerdes asks, do you think that Daenerys will end up riding one of her dragons eventually? I would be so bummed if she did not. They've been teasing it quite a bit, so I'm pretty sure that they're going to do it eventually. Because a scene like that would end up being such a huge payoff, I think they'll probably save it for the finale, if they do end up doing it. So don't expect to see something of that magnitude until episode 10. Remember how that final shot in season 3 was of all those people lifting her into the air? Don't you think a perfect way to visually call back to that would be for Drogon to literally lift her up into the air and then bam, slam to black for another year until season five comes. That's really just my opinion, but I think it would be the perfect way to end season four. So thank you so much for submitting questions, guys. These are always a ton of fun to do. And thank you so much for helping me get to 200,000 subscribers. So you're all amazing and awesome. Like I said, I'll try to post an updates video just for all the new stuff that I'm working on sometime this week. But my next bonus video for Game of Thrones will be all about Bravos, all about the culture and the organizations like the Faceless Ones and the Iron Bank. Be sure to subscribe to get that if you're finding me for the first time. Right now, click here to get my review of the episode and click here to learn all about the first war with the White Walkers and the building of the wall. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So I need to give away 200,000 high fives. So I'm going to leave this here for just a second. Okay. See you guys. Bye.